I have received notice from the Minister for Infrastructure that he wishes to make a statement on the Rural Roads Initiative. Before I call the Minister, I am aware that there has been a lot of coverage uh, of his statement in the press this morning, and I am sure he was keen to highlight the planned investment. I know that the Minister is only recently in post, but I would like to gently remind him of the requirements of Standing Order 18A3 not to give a statement to the media before it has been made available to members. I hope in future that he and other ministers will remember to observe this courtesy to the House. Minister. Thanks, Mr Speaker, and uh, certainly I will bear that in mind, uh, and I, I hope uh, broadcasting institutions will also bear in mind the importance of embargoes, and perhaps we could all get together. Uh, in future on these sort of issues, but returning to the statement here today, as a minister who represents a rural constituency of South Down, I am only too aware of the issues being raised about the maintenance of our rural roads network. Maintenance issues glean from talking and listening to people and communities on the ground. Issues around the frustrations and annoyances of rural communities having to tolerate the inconvenience and even potential dangers of the poor condition of many rural roads. Issues about the number of potholes, the time taken to repair them, and resultant damage being caused to vehicles. Issues about the general inconvenience caused. People and communities rely on the rural road network to do business, to go to work, to go to school, and to socialise. Rural roads are the connections that enable people to live their lives and help reduce isolation. Many rural communities are isolated enough without having to endure the additional difficulties imposed by inadequate road conditions. People living in rural areas are just as important to me and my executive as those who live in cities and larger towns, and that over the course of this mandate they will see action that reflects this assurance. Today I am taking action to address the concerns of rural communities. Today I am announcing a rural roads initiative to address maintenance backlogs. Over recent years, resource funding pressures have required the former Department for Regional Development to significantly reduce its routine road maintenance activities. Resources, by necessity, were concentrated in more heavily trafficked urban and rural roads. This meant that more roads did not receive the same level of maintenance that they would have been given in previous years. On the 14th of June, the Finance Minister announced the outcome of June monitoring. As a result of the capital allocation to my department, I am pleased to be able to announce to the House today that the 10 million rural roads initiative will be launched. The rural roads initiative will target sections of the network in greatest need of repair. With the £10 million funding targeted the areas of greatest need right across the four trans transport NI divisions, £10 million will deliver up to 1,000 small scale resurfacing schemes, schemes on short lengths of rural roads with high numbers of potholes, schemes that will start immediately so that the benefits will be realised as early as possible. Improving these roads will make a real difference to the lives of those living in our rural communities. I have asked my officials to identify the sections in greatest need and to start work as soon as possible. Rural constituencies right across the north will soon be able to see the benefits. This initiative will, of course, not solve all of our problems on our roads, but I believe it is a very positive measure to address a clear need. In addition to the resurfacing, the funding will allow for some road drainage enhancements on rural roads and a reasonable level of pre-surface dressing patching in advance of next year's surface dressing programme. I hope that the House will welcome this initiative. I want to be a listening minister, and I want to be prepared to take action where it is needed. I have listened to the concerns about the condition of rural roads, and today, Mr. Speaker, I am taking action. Gore Milgett. Call Ms. Jenny Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the minister for his statement? Um, and whilst I welcome the announcement of the £10 million being spent on rural roads, it's only a drop in a pothole, really. And that amount alone would need to be spent in my own constituency to cover uh, the rural roads. However, we need a coordinated approach to investment in our roads infrastructure and not the current piecemeal approach. Can the Minister outline for me his assessment of the impact of a lack of assess access to the European Regional Infrastructure Funds on, this, on his budget, or where he expects to get the money to supplement his budget if he can't access European funding? Or what is going to be the impact on Northern Ireland's infrastructure as access to European regional infrastructure funds is curtailed? In this uh, statement, Minister, you say £10 million on rural roads. Well, really, Can I ask? that covers, no, sorry, we're, we're Minister, not, that covers no, 7.5. Ask the member, 
Yes, I'm just we're, not here, we're not here for statements. It's questions on the statement. I'm just questioning now. 7.5 kilometres across Northern Ireland. Is that the extent to what that budget refers to, Minister, in terms of potholes? Uh, I thank the member for her list of questions there. Uh, I will deal uh, and start by saying that the £5 million that I announced uh, for road maintenance as part of the June monitoring a couple of weeks ago uh, will deal with the majority of potholes. This particular piece of investment we are announcing is a more strategic look, uh, a more uh, stitch in time saves nine approach to this is what the experts uh, tell us to do. It is only a start, £10 million as you, as you say. Uh, I would love to be announcing £100 million, £200 million. I am sure the Health Minister would rather have £50 billion than £5 billion, but it is reality is what we are dealing with uh, and this is, I think, a good start. Um, it is something that I hope we can build on going forward. Uh, in relation, just finally, to uh, the impact of, uh, of the British referendum on the, the so-called Brexit, um, this deals with rural roads and, to a large extent, our comprehensive uh, roads network. To a, large, to, to a large extent, such roads uh, would not be reliant upon European money. So this is money strictly from our own budgets to deal with this. Call the Chair of the Committee for Infrastructure, Mr William Humphrey. I thank the Minister for the announcement. Any announcement on the improvement of the infrastructure of Northern Ireland is to be welcome. Can I ask the Minister, is this additional money to the £5 million he announced yesterday, which was to enhance road maintenance service? And also, can I ask, is there any particular areas in Northern Ireland that he plans to target with this £10 million investment? I thank the Chair uh, for his question. Indeed, it is additional money. Uh, this is £10 million in addition to the five uh, that has previously been allocated to, to deal with roads maintenance. Uh, and this £10 million will be spread across the north and targeted to areas of greatest need. Um, so, you know, depending on the, the work that is needed done and the high density of rural roads in some parts compared to others, where there is greatest need, resources will be skewed. Call Mr. Declan McAleer. Ah, uh, good. I can call you. Um, I very much welcome the Minister's announcement here this morning. And indeed, he has proved that he is listening. And indeed, this follows on from an adjournment debate we had, had on this very subject uh, a number of weeks ago. I suppose the question that uh, many people will be asking is that, um, you know, wish to welcome it. They want to know how soon this will be released and how quick they'll be able to see differences on the ground in rural areas. Well, I hope they will see differences uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we have given the instruction to immediately start looking at this work. Summer months present the best opportunity to get value for money when it comes to resurfacing projects. Uh, so I hope, uh, as some have said, that people will see the tar men out on the roads um, starting to get into this. I, I, I say it at that particular adjournment debate on West Tyrone that places like Ahi Arn and Eden Dariff and places in our rural communities are important to me as Derry and Belfast. And I hope today goes some way to illustrate that that will be the case in point. Call Mr. Justin McNulty. Call Mr. Justin McNulty. Yes, can I ask the Minister what proportion of the funding will be available to Nuri Norma? The proportion of fundings won't be broken down into constituencies, as you'd expect. Uh, Southern Division, which covers a lot of that, will receive a substantial amount of this £10 million, as will the Western Division. Uh, they have a high density of rural network roads, and I'd expect the Newry Armagh constituency, like my own constituency of South Down and again in the western of the province, with such a high density of these rural roads, <coughs> will receive a substantial amount of this money. Call Ms Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, as I'm a new breed of politician, I'm going to start off slightly differently. Thank you. £10 million investment in rural roads is exactly what I asked you to do in my second question in the Infrastructure Committee. So credit where credit's due. It's a start. But thank you very much. Um, my question, therefore, then is to you. As we know, in line with the, Select Committee, the Transport Select Committee from the House of Commons, we know that it costs more to patch over patches. So thinking with that in mind, um, can I ask you, when your department um, will instigate the strategic plan to deal with the ongoing issue of road maintenance in rural and urban roads um, to ensure that we can uh, maintain efficiencies as well as repairing our roads on an ongoing basis. And secondly, to ask you if or when you're able to, if you could provide us with a list of the areas Ms. with Ms. Armstrong, 10 million pounds. I've been very liberal with Sorry. other members, but I ask you to come to the point on a question reference relevant to the Minister's statement this morning. 
was just to ask for when the strategic plan will be drawn up and for a list of areas where the 10 million will be spent. Thank you. Thank the member for her questions and her kind remarks indeed at the start. Uh, I, I guess to, to, to start in, in uh, rear, the, uh, speaking to the divisional managers this morning, I have no doubt they will be come under an onslaught of requests from members on their particular areas. Uh, if I could make a plea to let them get to their work and let them get out and get this work done um, and not to have the onslaught so quick. But uh, certainly that will become apparent in the weeks ahead uh, and through the recess and into September. I will be more than happy to engage with the committee again uh, if that is the case. On the need for more strategic uh, to look and investment into our rural roads and our roads in general, I agree entirely. Um, we were in Europe this week in Rotterdam looking at uh, various ways in which Europe can play a role, and I know this is topical given the, the recent referendum. But we need to find ways, innovative ways and more strategic ways to be able to invest in this. Simply spending money on pothole repair isn't good long term. It's not a good way to spend our money. That's why I hope the likes of this scheme can be more strategic and is simply more than just simply throwing a bit of tar into the odd pothole. Call Mr. Alex Easton. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, um, could I welcome the statement by the Minister? Um, and it is welcomed. Um, and my question to the Minister is. While there's 10 million going to the rural network, can I give a guarantee that the urban network will not, uh, will not uh, suffer as a result of the funding going to the rural network? Okay. I'm happy to give a guarantee to the extent that the need to address an imbalance is because for so long you know, our heavier traffic roads have got priority, so there's been a need to do this. Um, I think there will be an ongoing need to do this. Um, but this is not this is additional funds. This is not to take away um, from the, the level of spend that we will be carrying out anyway. And as I say, them high priority cases very often are in more heavier traffic roads in urban and are more busier rural roads. Call Mr. Sean Lynch. And I want to thank the minister for his statement. And I brought this issue up to the Minister, I think, ten minutes after he took up post that one of the biggest issues in rural areas was the state of rural roads, and I'm glad he has acted uh, quickly on that. Can I ask the Minister, will he be liaising with his divisional officers and engineers on how this money will be spent? Gormaugut. Gormaugut, for the question. And yes, I will indeed. Um, our divisional managers and teams are the experts when it comes to this. I, I want to give them the flexibility and room to be able to spend this money as how they see fit. Um, they are the guys on the, on the ground who know where the, this money is needed, uh, and I am happy to, uh, to give them that level of uh, autonomy when it comes to this sort of money. Um, but certainly, I think in the months ahead, local communities will see a benefit, uh, and I think that is a positive in the round. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I the statement from the Minister, and I welcome his initiative in relation to roads maintenance. Uh, Relating to weed spraying and, and uh, the cutting of grass, I think is, is a very important issue to certainly to my constituents in North Down. In relation to uh, the availability of contractors, uh, I understand working in, with Transport NIA that there is a real problem getting contractors who have been stood down over recent years, getting them now ramped up and available to carry out this work. Will this be a challenge to be able to complete this within this financial year? No, uh, there, there is an insatiable appetite for these sort of works throughout uh, the North. I have no problem that this uh, will present any sort of challenge in that way. Um, and we are more than happy to, to look at the contractor issue if that arises, but I don't believe it will be a problem. Call Ms. Carla Lockhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, can I thank the Minister for his announcement this morning and welcome it, certainly, as someone who represents a, a rural. Uh, constituency, uh, it's most welcome to hear this announcement. Just in relation to the connectivity that his department will have uh, regarding the roads that were damaged owing to the floods, particularly I'm thinking in the Banfoot area. Within Upper Ban, there was a number of roads were badly damaged uh, because of the flooding. And I'm just wondering, has the minister given any thought to the link up with, with maybe Dard on that, on that point? Well, June monitoring allowed us actually to secure uh, a number of re resources for dealing with some of the damaged roads in relation to the flooding. Uh, 
I know Fermanagh is a particular area where there, there are works already underway. Uh, that may be the case in, in, in point that you have raised. But certainly, if there are roads in need, and I think that's to be stressed here today, it is those areas in greatest need that will receive this money. Um, but I'm more than happy to, to meet with the member to discuss this in any further detail. Call Mr. Gordon Lyons. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome uh, the Minister's statement. Uh, I was pleased to read um, that he says that rural constituencies right across the north will soon be able to see the benefits. Uh, I, I suppose it's too much to ask that when he refers to the north, he's talking about the northern division uh, in particular, because that would have um, uh, been much more pleasing. Uh, but would the Minister be able to uh, elaborate uh, on how um, the criteria will be set out for um, who will be eligible and what projects will be eligible for this funding? Yeah, more than happy to. Uh, allocations will be made using a range of weighted indicators based on numbers of defects, uh, numbers of public liability claims, carriageway area together with road condition from various surveys. But again, I go back to the fact that our divisional managers know their areas very well. They are the guys who will be taking the lead on this, uh, and certainly from a local area, they will know where this investment is needed. Call Mr. Stuart Dixon. And thank you, Minister, for your statement this morning. And uh, following on from my colleague, I uh, certainly welcome any investment that will be made in rural roads in East Antrim. But I also have a concern for urban roads. So, can the Minister explain to us what plans he has to ensure that urban roads, many of which in housing developments are in exactly the same state as rural roads, what plans he has to invest in resurfacing them? I thank the member for his question. And as I alluded to earlier, this isn't to suggest that this is the only road maintenance that will be taking place. Uh, there is 54 million set aside for structural maintenance, and that will continue in all other areas. That concludes questions to the Minister on his statement. Point of order, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In, in light of the, the Minister's reference to media embargoes and the clear hint that a, an embargo was broken, uh, I think it would only be fair to say I would moderate my criticism that the House was not first to hear of the statement accordingly uh, if the breach was beyond the Minister's control. Noted your comments, uh, Mr Nesbitt.